प्लीज स्टार्ट मैम थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू ओके सो बैक टू द इवनिंग सेशन वी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस लेक्चर सेशन बाय प्रोफेसर आर के मजुमदार ही इज टूडे स्पीकर ही इज अ रिटायर्ड हेड फ्रॉम द फिश प्रोसेसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट कॉलेज ऑफ फिशरीज सेंट्रल एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी सी ए यू त्रिपुरा he has guided more than 20 mfsc students and one phd student he has published more than 70 research paper 14 book chapters presently he is working as consultant of fisheries post harvest and value chain management under german corporation in india so this uh, we welcome sir uh, to this uh, 21 days training program uh, for your insight on for uh, for professional personal and professional development education needs to be more innovative over to you sir thank you good afternoon all so i have been assigned this topic for personal and professional development education needs to be more innovative so you know the today's education and today's our students are not uh, that means that not innovative because just one experience i am sharing so i have so many students they are in the corporate bodies so i asked them so why you don't you come to my college to take some of our students uh, in your business or in your this uh, art so what he said what he replied sir uh, you just told me uh, just i want to tell you one thing we are preparing students so for agriculture veterinary and all this thing but our students are not that much compatible that much compatible to work in the corporate sector or to work in any private farm so they are we are you are making them to get the only the government job then actually i agree i agree and that uh, things also i have uh, discussed in many higher platform that we are not making our students uh that means other than the government job they will not be competent so i just just coming to my topic so you know this uh nelson mandela what he said it means it is a good head and a good heart is a best combination but with this combination if any literary turn or pen is added that it becomes something very special so what is education am i audible you know yes sir okay no any problem no no sir it's good sir continue okay now education simply if we tell about the define the education it is just to facilitate learning for acquisition of knowledge skills values beliefs habits so that any individual can think something separately uh, can have some ideas can have some outlook about the society or about the other things so the great poet william butler is all said that uh, education should not be only the filling of a pail that means it is not only the pushing knowledge to somebody's brain uh, or just some yeah, some uh, yeah, filling of the knowledge uh, but also he has to light the fire that means whatever all the thoughts skills beliefs will be imparted or inculcated to a student that that has to help him to light a fire that means education now in the present society education is you know this uh, uh, for the society to survive and to thrive now actually education it is not that what we are uh, learning at the school and college that we carry throughout our life education actually is generally we forget what we have uh, what we have been taught in our school college or university in our different subjects right? but what we carry with this with all these things that is education so sometimes uh, there are two businessmen in but by discussing with this thing by seeing their dealings you can say which businessman has got some education in his uh, or which is some educated education background that means his attitude his way of talking his dealings all these things it will give it will have some 
separate it will make him separate from that other other business so that is the education so it is the, actually the training of a mind it is not the stuffing of the brains uh, it is the assimilation of ideas that means not the dissimulation data that means different ideas will be assimilated in his brain so that with all these ideas he can think something new something different you will have some different outlook so true education is actually behind the earning your degrees or it is more than the professional age so true education inculcates moral values build character it helps to build character it helps to think positively moreover it's simply helping attitude it gives some or it generates some attitude of helping and attitude of giving to the society nowadays it is very painful to see the very young students well always you will see in the bus or tram or train either their eyes will be fixed on the mobile screen or there will be some headphone in the ear and they will just uh, keep their eyes closed they do not know what is happening here and this is left and right it seems that they do not have any responsibility yeah. uh, what is going on that's what so we don't want this type of students it is students uh, so but this is the real picture now everywhere you go anybody even some elderly person also eyes are kept on the mobile phone they are not interested to see what is the uh, right uh, side person whether he is uh, falling or he is or he, he needs some help or he is uh, feeling some uneasiness like this thing. so that is our ideal experience so education true education it will tell you what is your right because for human right uh, why because now you can see in the in the in different developed countries it is very difficult to impose any law in any developed countries mainly the european countries and, and the united states because every citizen is they know what is their right and that has been inculcated inculcated to him through the education so that's why once the people are very much concerned of when we know what is our right so it will be very difficult for any government to impose any law or to impose any restriction so education is for a powerful driver of the development for any development of any country of any society without education it is impossible it helps to give people help it helps to reduce poverty because education will give you so many ideas with this thing livelihood can be improved education will give you the gender equality education helps for peace because only educated mind will not go on uh, indiscriminate firing or indiscriminate killing without knowing the reason or or they will they will not support the riots or they will always try to mitigate the thing through discussion and education it really fosters social cohesion as i said just now that, that the, yes, our social responsibility will increase so once the social responsibility will increase one will help other then there will be a total bonding in the society now so now if you link education to the economy you can say the education is the foundation of, of our economy it should not be only the comprehensive sustainable as super but it uh it also to fight continuously with the challenges of the fast changing and unpredictable globalized world now you know this our yeah, but yeah, globally there is a fast changing things are happening because now this is the recent example is the corona who are knowing that uh, here 10 years before that there are so many uh, such virus games, Zika, then adenovirus, then uh, bar, chicken, all these things. But no such virus like coronavirus uh, damage such an extent, but which are unexpected. So th that, is the, that means they're unpredictable. So events with this, all this, all this research, all the scientists, they are doing all this improvement in the medical science, that they are totally failure. Even beyond invention of this uh, your vaccine, several millions of people died. So that means, so that's why education has to take this challenge. Now, coming to the from the very beginning of the education system, of education of our NCT India, and this is very unique. We are having 
the Kurukul system, where in the in the Kurukul system, say it was a, 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 a sort of a residential in the nature, and people from different uh, from the just nearby any ashram, uh, they used to come to a teacher, and it was not only just a bookish knowledge, but all the practical knowledge which is here, which was required for day to day life that used to be taught in this guru pool. And after completion of this, their studies, they have to keep Guru Doshina for the return, for the acknowledgement, for the respect and thanks. That was the Guru Pool system. Now this is not there. Then our ancient Vedic universities. You know, this Indian ancient uh, this education system was unique in the world. Uh, this is along the university, it was in the Bihar. And at this, from, from the far distant countries, uh, yes, to say, a knowledge seekers used to come to this Nalanda University, and it was the first great university in the recorded history. Uh, similarly, Takshila University, so this is the pride of the India. Now came the British, so British helped to improve our education system, but why they helped? It is not that it is simply there because they used to. Once they started administering the entire India, they started their office. It was not possible to bring all these uh, official staff from the uh, from the UK. So they started what they do. They started. They thought that no, our Indians has to be educated so that they can work in our office. Uh, they can be of our help. Then they passed one bill in the British Parliament and. Uh, which from year 1854 onwards they helped in shaping Indian education system. So there is a lot of contribution that you know uh, about this contribution of the British in the Indian education system, Indian printing media. So education, then education reform took place in 20th century when the, the government nationalized number of universities and then the education has taken a uh, total shape. And according to the government of India, they have given the they have given this course regarding education that we give them rules, we give them wings, and get choice from little things. A hope that will so, a hope that will try. We are sure that one day our children will learn to fly. That we are giving them rules, we are giving them wings. So, yeah. so from these little things, a joy will come, and one day they will so, they will try, and one day. Ideally, our children will, will learn to fly. So that was what uh, occurred by the government of India here regarding the education. So now coming to the modern education, modern education is something different from the ancient education because modern education is linked to the economy. Modern education, because we don't a, uh, a buzzer girl completes at university or college level, that is fast. Their first duty is to seek some job, and that will be in the government. So our education system also should look for the better economy, better job opportunity. Uh, but job opportunity is not possible. It's not possible for the government, even of the even for the private sector, to absorb all the students, all the persons coming to the university or the colleges. So that's why education should also take the responsibility for entrepreneurial development, the creation of innovators, thinkers. Ignition or passion of a student says to, that during their education, he will hear yeah, that means he will have the capacity to think differently, and some passion will generate within him so that he can do something innovative and something uh, different from the others. So, matter is that, despite of all sorts of educational research and innovation, our country. Uh, has not yet seen any discernible improvements, improvements in either the school students or the college graduates. Hmm. Because our school students are college graduates, they cannot improve their livelihoods without government or private jobs. So this is the very drawback in our education system. That means something, some change has to be there. So recently, you know, I have had this new education policy. There's some sort of this type of uh, there is some policy they have taken government based on the policy uh, uh, 
uh, of the other European countries because in other developed countries, every time there is a research on the education, is how this education can serve best. But this is very lacking in, in our country. There is not that much research is going on the education. Then what are the existing chalk and clock system, whether it is useful for the student. Or we are making some plan, we are making some persons that they all will depend on the government for the job. So this we are not uh, thinking to come out from the talk and talk system. But this is the problem, this is the challenge. So what is the question of the day? Now question of the day has arisen, whether our education system is not competent enough or not, not that much innovative. Yeah. Because if it is not innovative, that's why our students, pass hours, yeah, are just looking for the government jobs or the private jobs. So why our students are not thinking for some innovative idea? Now, India's higher education system is also third in the rank in the world, after China and the USA. We have so many internationally acclaimed IITs, AIMs, IIMs. These are all globally acclaimed. Hmm. Our standard of education is very high. But with the changing face of the education is also there. Now, yeah, I think several years before, government started vocational education. Those who could not study, could not go to school due to some financial problem or school dropout for them, or they know some artifacts, some, uh, some, uh, yeah, some handicap work, they have some skills. So to ignite their, this hidden talent, the vocational education system has started and it has got a very good a good response suppose somebody is working in some here yeah, shoe making the texture yeah, textile or yeah, different other things so to just help them to to improve their skill or you can say the skill development for this industrial training institute that polytechnics uh, started now IT enabled classrooms also started. This is the model, some improvement. Then smart classrooms and all developed in the education system. Now, the global exchange program. This global exchange program, students from different countries will come to India. And from India, they will do so they, they are doing exchange between uh, the, not only the education system, all over the students from the different country will, because in one country, whatever types of education is there, once they will go to other country, they will see the difference. So that will improve their uh, total education system. Now, we say, yeah, but, uh, several years back, uh, this earlier, uh, this um, uh, chief minister of Delhi, um, yeah, Miss yeah, Mrs. Sheila, she started one very interesting, very good scheme for the girl child, just to educate the girl, to promote the education of the girl child. Now, education, why a good human being is required? Part of one is there's a personal development. Is that without education, it is not possible to develop personality. So only an educated mind and good heart they can combine together. Educated, educated mind and good heart they can combine to, together to create some revolutionary changes in the society. So personal development has been defined by Robert Park and Arnold Cooper that personality is the sum of on sum and organization of these traits some in organization of these states which determine the role of the individual in the group in a group a person with high uh, standard personality that can be recognized easily in a group so he has some ethical values like his morality honesty to decide which is right which is wrong a fairness that is responsibility his conscience his choice his honor his value all these things that means all the one, all the good characteristics, and they are in a person. That means that it's uh, that his personality is developed, and we call it says uh, that his uh, his personality is very good. And how he has got this thing? He has got this thing through education only. So individual personality is just some total of the person, all the good characters, quality, attitudes, ways, psychological traits, beliefs, motives, thoughts, the way of thinking. I teach you all these things. If it is there in a person, then it called it is it's a it's a good personality. Personality is not only the means of the outlook. Ah, is any hairstyle or any dress or any way of working. This doesn't mean that he's a personality. 
personality is reflected in his in all activities, in all spheres of his individual life. And that recognizes, that separates him, uh, or that single him out uh, from a group. So education helps to build the opinions, because sometimes what happens, if anybody says something, we just, we, we don't want to uh, contradict, or we, we don't want to give any other opinion. But education helps to build his opinion, so that uh, it has some different views. Hmm. He doesn't uh, easily agree or readily agree to anybody's uh, imposed decision. He will think this, he will analyze, then he will give his views. And that help is taken, given by the education. So now the role of education in shaping the personality is the next place. So only education can elevate anybody's personality. So one personality development, but personality development is important. Because elevated person can push and walk forward and outstand the crowd. Only people will be uh, people will be recognized. Uh, they will be they will come into discussion. And once they are a big high person, once they are a big elevated personality. And for good personality, education. <clears throat> we know so many personalities uh, in the world. They have set an example, like Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking, etc. So we do the whole world knows their name. Because they have been personally and they have been good education, all these things and that innovative idea. So education doesn't mean that somebody has to go to school and college and, and, and they get some degree. In you will see in other uh, so many scientists, you know, uh, we've all come across it is not it is some people didn't go to school, some uh, school drop, some could not pass that. that. That doesn't mean that uh, so education is something different. So, so now coming to the because what we need that our education should be innovative. So before that we go we should know what is innovation. So there are two terms: one is invention and innovation. So simply I can give you to, uh, one example. So if, when anybody somebody might have yeah, invented this mobile system, one motherboard, one speaker. On screen, uh, some photons. Uh, this is a simple, a simple mind. This is called the invention. But once somebody says simply added some camera in the mobile, this is innovation. Somebody added towards light, uh, somebody added some other things. Uh, so, or somebody added something there by which this you can continue AC, you can control your TV. Uh, is the innovation so invention is something it's a that which is invented and once you translate it translate the invention to a process or to a service and for which customer will be ready to pay extra or that will be of different service in the society that is the innovation and that will create a change in the society so invention has to do with the creation of a new ideas, any new process, a new pro a thought, uh, a new application, etc. Uh, sometimes some invention is not also can is, cannot be translated. Uh, but what is whether any invention, whether it can be translated for some or it can address some other issues, some other problem. Uh, that is the innovation. <clears throat> so, so suppose here. Uh, this is the innovation. This person is thinking that okay, this could be done. And from the innovative mm -hmm. idea, whatever is come, this is called entrepreneurship. Because, see, there is a difference between business and entrepreneurship. Business means sometimes uh, yeah, something I will purchase from you. Uh, if, if I refuse 10, I will sell it in the rupees 15. That means the 5 rupees profit I will get. This is the business. There is no that thought, no your ideas, no uh, that is nothing is done. But in the innovation, suppose same thing, but I will present it in a different way. In in a different way. So, so once a, a entrepreneur comes to the market with some innovative idea, initially there will be no competitor. So he will have a monopoly in the market. Now you have seen so many this Apple, this thing, then EB, Tesla. So the, all these things. All these are innovative ideas. So once they are coming to the market, they are uh, they're the monarch of the market. But after some time, again, new 
uh, new that is another company will come then again is those who have come fast again they are they are thinking will stop again they will think for creation of other product so government job you know it is sinking day by day due to privatization and other reasons so whether the question is whether infusion of innovative ideas through degree level education could be the pathfinder for the educated unemployed youth. That means if it is it is already determined that the government job is limited, private job is limited. So why not from the school level, from the college level, university level, why not we inculcate these ideas? We impart these ideas to the students. Yeah, that means how to think, how to think differently. That means a different types of uh, how to create different types of innovative idea based on the resource. So this is the thing. This is the thing. If it can be uh, transmitted to the students from the very beginning, from the education level, so the in future, uh, if by this time he will uh, complete his degree, then he will be able to do something his own instead of running for the government job. So why innovative ed education? So in education because all the unemployed are educated they are facing a crisis of productivity and, and efficiency the technology other changes in the society and other and technology and other changes, it changes in the society demand innovation in the education so that from the very beginning itself that idea will be there that thoughts will be created in their mind okay now after my degree i have to do something so why not i should just, uh, think something different with that with the resources available, with the financial capabilities available. So countries, social and economic development depends on the citizens' education. And this is called the knowledge society. So innovation, innovation will make the education system effective and, the, and efficient. The student will be able to know if this type of system is there, then from the very beginning, student will be able to know the, what are the local resources and how best it can be utilized for some entrepreneurship. So it will create some entrepreneur development in the student. So think about something uh, instead of waiting for the government job. Because <clears throat> now more people have a high quality life. The society has become more prosperous. It was not like earlier. Uh, and it is a very high, uh, their lifestyle has changed. And, and once uh, they want to live life, uh, not like a very rural one uh, just once anybody has come to the urban life he wants to maintain this life and he wants to improve it so but one of the problem in the our contemporary society is that the educational system must be able to train youths for life so innovative idea or innovative education improves student knowledge different skills also teach them to how to confront everyday challenges and get to the problems and how to resolve them, how to think, how to give opinion, how to just assess which is right, which is wrong. Because all these things is required for the comes. Uh, it is required for society to grow, for a person to grow, and that comes through the innovative education. So our socio-economic level uh, and impact of innovation is far-reaching, and it is essential for the growth. So our education system must be, must be closely related to the individual's needs, their personal development, and uh, also for the cultural environment in which we live. So today, positive thinking is a uh, is a positive thinking with a positive education system is required uh, so that innovative ideas can be transmitted for the uh, student levels. Now. Young people of the society they need to develop not only their cognitive competence, competence, but also cooperative nature, social competence. Now, student, it is not that every student is looking for the mobile or looking for the state, but there are also a group of students. They want some cognitive competence and then also cooperative nature. They want to improve the society, the social competence. Uh, they want to improve the basic condition for the lifelong learning and improve employability and youth most of the youth of the today's they want some business environment because they know that 
uh, they will not get any government for private jobs. So they want to start. So from the very beginning, they want some business environment. So want some technology which can be easily uh, transformed to the innovative ideas. So degree program of the today, our degree program of the today must prepare students for occupation and social environment, which at this moment doesn't even exist. Now to meet the social changes where availability of, of job is very restricted and we require different type of innovative ideas of learning and which can be transmitted during their through their school or college education and which ultimately significantly increase the level of interest and the motivation in the Europe. Now innovative education versus entrepreneurship. Now, innovation is outcome of the innovation is the successful entrepreneurship. Only innovative ideas can make any enterprise the outstanding because entrepreneurship is something different uh, from one to another uh, in different, either different study different product uh, so that means once any innovative idea is that this can be translated into an entrepreneurship so innovation is the is nothing it is nothing that something has to develop something new hmm. or that innovation takes place only something that already exists Somebody has to improve it, change it, make it better, make it best for their customers. So innovation and creativity work uh, hand in hand for successful entrepreneurs. So as I said, the current talk to talk system, we create only the uh, job seekers, government job seekers or private job seekers, and with very lack of confidence, with uh, lack of self belief. Sometimes the students also feel boredom in the classroom, and they are not compatible and and most of the time they have obsessive fear of failure for doing any business uh, so they and whatever they know also they cannot present it hmm. so all these drawbacks are there in the present education system so to make it more uh, innovative so that students to passing out from the university would not go for seeking job rather they will be the job giver so our society needs this type of uh, uh, that means students. So <clears throat> the government job is diminishing day by day, and private job is also limited. So this entrepreneurial development only can um, make a significant change in the society uh, by changing their attitude from job seeker uh, to job giver. Now, any business idea based on the resources uh, can be incubated. And this is the duty of the government that the, any business idea, any business idea can be nurtured. Uh, it can be given a real picture. Nowadays, it is hard the business incubation, startup, so many things because it is not possible for the government to job. So the government is opening different options. So the students with high education can come up with the startup and government is ready to fund. There are several government schemes are there and they are ready to uh, finance for different types of startup. Only innovative business ideas could make a successful startup. Uh, because present day business is also a very competitive market. So on the same thing, uh, same thing but different companies cannot do well. So if something innovative ideas if they are behind product then it will be successful yeah, start up successful <clears throat> so our degree programs can implant can implant this type of innovative ideas from during their education time itself so that after completion of the, their degree they will be enabled or they will it will make them enable to accept the challenges so in all the states, there are so many natural resources on there. So many more new products can be developed from our natural resources for commercialization. So now, <clears throat> so the proper education, and this is the duty of the university of the college to teach the students, uh, to create some environment in the their education system so that any student can think can have some idea and ultimately they can materialize it. 
so <clears throat> so it is in this changing scenario of the, of, of the society it is very much essential to update our present education system now now in different universities they have already started like in the degree level different courses like skill development entrepreneurship e-marketing value addition knowledge-based business etc uh, because that encourages the students how is the new education policy what i've said to some extent that it is not uh, uh, it is not uh, it is not mandatory that if a, 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 a student will complete a four-year degree course in education or in the veterinary or in the fisheries like this so if they want if any student want to no, know after two years no i have some idea i will start with this i will i will, uh, I will have i have some innovative idea i'll start one entrepreneur i will have one startup that if he starts this thing he will be supported by the university and the colleges then and if he is successful then he will be then he will be given this he will be awarded this degree so this type of European style education system is coming in India also. Uh, probably in the our new education system, and and, and gradually uh, this old education system will be replaced by the new education system. That means it has given more emphasis not only on the vocational knowledge, but that means a student from the instead of completion of degree for four years has to give line for the government job if he can start his own business. Uh, even after the completion two years of his degree. So that will be more beneficial not only for the student but also the government also. So and, and, and for this thing students also should be well acquainted with the natural resources and the commercial importance. And that arrangement has to be done by the college or universities. So our curriculum, degree level curriculum should be restructured in such a way that there is scope for knowing the resources of each and every state, then the project writing based on its innovative ideas. It is not that all the ideas will be innovative, but who knows? If adventure, who knows? The a good idea will come from the back venture. It is not that always the front venture will have some idea because he gets the because he still we are believing the number in system. Yeah, we don't uh, believe that uh, a student sitting in the back bench uh, he can have more talent than the front bencher because he sits in the back because he doesn't have uh, this 80 percent or 90 percent but getting once you go for give some scope all the students to, to express the idea which, uh, to write essay on the innovative ideas then only you will come to know uh, say, oh, okay, maybe he's back better, but his his idea is very good. Uh, it can be nurtured, so his skill can be developed based on his ideas. So that's why that type of education system will create a student. Uh, that it is there in other developed countries. It is not like that. It is important. Everybody has to uh, yeah study science, medical engineering. It is not like that. Uh, so that type of education system is there, but we, our Indian education system also should be started in this way so that after passing out they will be ready to take the challenges and to materialize their ideas and become an entrepreneur so another is the business incubator now you have heard because business incubator it is an incubation center where whereas any ideas if anybody comes with any ideas that ideas is given a shape you can do some research on your ideas Ah, then he will be he will be linked to some mentors, some investors, and other support, so that finally he can come to the market uh, with his ideas. So, some universities has, has also started business incubator as a tool for accelerating hmm, entrepreneurship. I've seen in Delhi University, of course, business incubator is there, where one uh, student he just innovated his from his innovative idea he made one uh, helmets and whenever you wear these helmets and whenever air will pass and it will be air will be purified and this purified air will enter you because they you know this highly polluted they live by 
So from this Delhi, and it has got a good response even from the foreign countries. So that type of, uh, so all the universities, they know. So that's why uh, from last four, five piano hours, they have already that means started their business incubation system. Because only the business incubation system, any student will give a clear idea whether how his product will work in the market. Uh, uh, where from you will get the financial support? Uh, how so all these ideas because then we won't matter. So university a relationship between the university and the business incubator is necessary. Why? Because university is the source of knowledge, source of research, even resource, even resource, knowledge resource. Uh, in the and the today's innovation driven center. Uh, because most of the you know this. So many, most of the things are coming nowadays in the market. You see, suddenly it comes to the market uh, and gives a very proper profit. This is all the innovative ideas. So, it's a great advantage if, in, if any university, and uh, at any university level, a business incubator is established. So, that's say from the during the study itself, uh, he'll be able to. He, I will get this courage that after passing out, hmm, uh, he will yeah, be able to start his own business. He will not run for the government job, and ultimately, this will be the this will be the good for the government itself and good for the society also. Because then he will contribute to the society. So, thank you. Any question, so, please? Thank you very much, sir, uh, for such a nice presentation. And uh, I personally think this is the need of the hour to look uh, education from this different point of view. Because uh, nowadays, entrepreneurship is uh, much more focused to be focused in education system. But before that, uh, we should also know about the basics of entrepreneurship and uh, uh, my personal suggestion is that uh, that these type of courses and uh, expert uh, training should be organized by government so that the first the mentor should be trained yeah. in this area so yes it really, yeah, it's very uh, essential need of today's and uh, I, I think most of them are agreed and if you have any question you can ask directly from sir or write in the chat book actually in our college of fisheries also we have started one course entrepreneurship development and that is there in the, i think agriculture veterinary even engineering also because this course is there now as for ugc norms also it has been made mandatory yes sir, because that's why in one lecture uh agriculture marketing in starting itself i told that uh, mm. we itself as a teacher or a researcher, we are not yet equipped with these latest development. So how that is it. possible, how we can transfer mm. to these students? We are still mm. going the old age education system we are uh, means passing out. So first the need is the teacher's training mm. in this area. Yes, yes. Teachers, uh, that means improvement is first you know, teacher's training. Yes. Allow this talk and talk system, numbering yes. system. Yeah, yeah. So, any questions? Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you, NADL, NADCL, for offering me this thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you for valuable inputs and. Uh, sparing your valuable time to this session okay. thank you one and all thank you ending the meeting okay thank okay. you thank you thank you